All right, welcome to a, another episode of my show. Um, someone was asking um, over, re, over, over and over again, repeatedly and obnoxiously on the comments um, for information about how to be a trucker. So I was gonna make a video about, well, I was thinking about making a video about that. I actually made some notes, so I guess I'll just make a video about it. Um, first of all, I'd find a good trucking school. Um, companies won't hire, won't hire you if all you have is a CDL. Even if you've been trucking for a while, um, they might require you to go back to school. So um, I went to Roadmaster. Um, if you can go to a uh, community college or um, trade school or something, and you could probably get a get it. You might be able to get a cheaper deal. Um, my trainer did that; paid a lot less than I did. Uh, if you're Native American, you might be able to get your tribe to pay for it, which is what one guy at, my, at Roadmaster did. I uh, need a pretty decent driving record. Um, Roadmaster six thousand uh, dollars. They give you a loan, twenty percent interest rate. Uh, if you can pay it off in cash, it's five thousand. You can pay it off with a credit card, it's five thousand. Um, you can do your research on which company you want to work for on online or by going to a truck stop and talking to truckers. Um, um, I went to uh, the trucker, the truckersreport.com. Um, uh, there's a lot of people on there that say a lot of bad things about a lot of companies. Um, if there's a company that almost everyone is saying bad things about, don't go there. Uh, if most people are saying it's a fair company, then it's probably a pretty good company. Um, uh, I think Trans Am, Stevens, and TMC are probably pretty good companies, um, depending on what, you, what you're looking for. Uh, you should be pre-hired by multiple companies and by your um, third or fourth week in trucking school. Um, most of the places you send applications off to should accept you. Um, in your first week at Roadmaster, if you go to Roadmaster, um, you'll probably you'll probably get about five or six hours of sleep a night just from cramming for your um, for your permit. Um, uh, it's a, the per the test for the permit is really really hard, so don't mess around on it, uh, or you will fail it, and then you'll spend an extra week studying and cramming to go take it again, and you're not getting paid for that, so that's that's not good. Um, after you get your permit, then you can sleep. Um, uh, you can't really cram to learn how to back your truck any better, or you know, or drive it on the road. That's just something you have to learn from experience. So I would say try to um, try to relax. If you, it's easier said than done. If, if you're just nervous in the truck, you know, I, I, like I was, um, that I think that slowed down my learning. Um, Okay, so the testing at, uh, at the DOT, there's a driving test and a backing test. First, they make you do the backing test, and then if you pass that, then you get to take the driving test. Uh, the backing test is, um, is three maneuvers you have to do. One of the maneuvers is going to be a straight back, I think. And then, and then there are three other maneuvers, and you have to do two of them. Which they're chosen at random. So it'll either be a 90 degree back where you have to jackknife the truck and trailer into a spot that's at 90 degrees from where the truck and trailer is. There's an offset back where you have to back the truck up uh, into a spot that's offset um, one truck width over uh, in one direction or the other. And then, then there's a parallel park, which is kind of silly. I've never had to do one. And if I ever did have to do one, I'd probably just drive to the next truck stop so that I didn't have to do one. But um, so you're going to get two of those maneuvers and I think for the straight back uh, you can get out and look once and you I don't, I'm not sure how many pull-ups they let you have for that one but it's pretty easy uh, for the more complicated maneuvers I think they let you have two free pull-ups and I think you can get out and look twice I'm not exactly sure but something like that um, every time you, you can't get out and look more than twice um, every time you pull up beyond the, the two free pull-ups it costs you a point and every time you back up the trailer or truck and encroach on the cones, uh, that costs you one point. So if you encroach, it costs you one point for encroaching and then another point for pulling up. Um, which is kind of weird because obviously in real life if you encroach then you damage your trailer or the wall or another trailer or your truck. So, um, and you can get out and look all you want in real life. Um, but on the test you can encroach. Uh, and it's actually kind of a convenient way of finding out where your trailer is if you've already used all your get out and looks. You can just back up until they blow their whistle and then you know that you've encroached and you know where your trailer is. Um, uh, after that, you've got the, uh, 
Oh, one other thing you can do is you can kind of watch your tester to see when they start reaching for their whistle. Because it's kind of a knee-jerk built-in thing that they do. And when you see that, then you stop backing up because you know you're about to encroach. Uh, on the driving test, um, my Roadmaster, they, I guess they probably would have gotten in trouble. They, they're not allowed to, to actually um, train us on the route that the DOT um, tests us on. Or they, 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 don't, they, even, they stay out of that side of town, actually. Um, but what you can do if you fail your test, or you, if you figure out where the, where the route is, is you can get in your car and go drive around that route and pretend you're in your truck which is maybe, I don't know, kind of cheating. I did that because I failed my test the first time. Just drove around that area of town until I figured out where the route was and then drove around the route uh, two or three times in my car. Um, pretending I'm in a truck, making wide turns and that kind of thing. Um, okay, so once you've picked your company and you're going off to orientation, um, you'll probably have to share a hotel room, so I would bring earplugs and or sleeping pills so that you don't have to uh, deal with someone who snores and also when you get in your truck with your trainer um, he might snore so earplugs sleeping pills whatever you have Dri driving tired is not any fun um, by the way I figured out like like I don't know I don't know it's kind of like you, somehow you kind of get used to it and I don't know I, like I don't really get tired during the day anymore uh, but initially when I was first driving I would get tired during the day and I would notice that if I would uh, eat something and that would wake me up. I don't know, my brain's like, you're eating now, you can't go to sleep. I don't know what happened, but anyway, uh, that's, I don't know, you might try that at first. Um, if you want internet access, um, I have a cell phone. It has um, uh, a Sprint, I use Sprint for my internet access. Um, and uh, I, their 4G internet access is really, really poor compared to, say, Verizon, but it is unlimited, so you can use all the 4G you want when you have 4G access. Um, uh, 3G is limited at 4 gigs, um, so kind of decide what you want. If you want good 4G, but you want, it'll be limited with Verizon, but, you know, whatever. Uh, you can get internet access at truck stops, but it's probably, it's kind of pricey because there's a few different chains, and you really want to spend 120 bucks a year for all three of them, and you know, or three or four, however many there are, or do you want to be limited to only one chain, you know. Um, you can actually use points on your on your fuel reward cards, I think at TA, to get internet access, so that's something to keep in mind. Although, obviously, um, you're not going to be collecting points fast enough fuel in there to pay for constant internet access, but uh, it's kind of nice in a pinch. Um, you can get plastic containers to hold bars of soap on your toothbrush at Walmart, which is kind of nice because I don't like putting my soap on the soap tray that every other trucker puts their soap on. Um, I would get flip-flops um, for the shower uh, because they don't clean the floors like they ought to in most places, and it just makes your showering experience a lot more pleasant. Okay, you're probably going to want to get a... Motor Carrier Road Atlas, that is not a regular car atlas, it's specifically specifically for truckers. You can get that at a truck stop or online. Uh, if you get it at the truck stop, uh, ignore the price on the back of it, see what it rings up for. I think I got mine for $40, it was listed at like $70 or $80 on the back. Uh, you might get the laminated version, that way it won't get all torn up. Um, uh, if you can get an older edition online or at the truck stop, that'll probably be cheaper. Um, now your GPS, uh, you're going to want to get a trucker GPS, not a car GPS, and those are between $300 and $700 at the truck stops. Uh, I'm sure you can probably get this stuff online before you go to trucking school or before you go to orientation. Uh, anything you can get online before you go to orientation is great because otherwise you're going to wind up paying retail for stuff uh, at truck stops or at Walmart or at, you know, CompUSA, wherever you can fit your truck in. Um, I actually have a laptop here um, that I have trucking software on because, I don't know, man, it's like six, $700 for a high-end GPS. I think I'd rather just buy a laptop and put GPS software on it, you know? So that's what I did. I have the software on it is Copilot Live version 8 truck and it's not actually not as nice as those high-end GPS's because I think they they'll tell you where Walmart parking lots are with 
truck parking and that kind of thing. Um, mine doesn't do that. It's, it looks kind of like a cheapy little um, um, GPS software that's adapted for a laptop, but it does have a nice big display since it's on a laptop, so that's good. Um, the GPS adapter for it is a BU353. BU-353. Uh, this is actually recommended by the co-pilot people for this software. Um, because my Delorme adapter didn't work because I, the Delorme just doesn't support their products correctly and um, they didn't update their driver for whatever I think whatever version of Windows this is. Um, if you want to get yourself a desk that mounts to your passenger chair, um, I have a cyber trucker desk. It's stationary, doesn't move around. Uh, you can get a Jato desk, it swivels around. It, if I had it to do over again, I'd probably just buy a Jato desk. I think some TA truck stops have them. Probably have to look around, try to find one. Um, get your fuel reward cards. Uh, ideally, I guess while you're out with your trainer. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to get them um, uh, after you get dispatched. And basically, fuel reward cards are handy for um, your free showers. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to shower only when you get fuel, um, which is kind of inconvenient because you're kind of being rushed sometimes and you, you don't have time to stop and shower when you buy fuel. Um, or you're going to have to pay cash for your shower, so uh, get those fuel reward cards um, sooner rather than later so that you don't have to do it um, when you're running around like, with it, like a chicken with your head cut off. Uh, you might get glasses if your vision isn't perfect because it'll help you see signs further ahead. Um, I don't actually need these to drive, but they are um, handy. Um, okay, so yeah, paying off your, your trucking school, um, there's kind of some liability there because you can rack up debt and then um, get fired and then you have debt and no job and you're unhirable. So um, I think, I haven't really mentioned this, but I mean, it's it's... I backed up my truck. I actually got in, in a fender bender with a car, which is my fault, which is stupid and just, oh man, I'm a lot more careful now after that. It just kind of freaked me out. Um, and I also um, backed my truck up to a trailer tr to a trailer that was jacked up too high because I was just freaking out and in a hurry. Um, and so I damaged the plastic fan on the back of my truck, um, which counts in Trans Am's eyes as a preventable accident, so I am one preventable accident away from getting fired, uh, potentially. Um, it's kind of a coin toss, um, but I should have my trucking school paid off by then, so I mean, I don't know. I, I've got money stashed away, so I don't really need this job. I can go work at Wendy's and be just fine. Uh, you know, I did this because I just didn't want to have to do real work. Um, so, you know, there, there's kind of some liability there. I mean, if you just, if you really, really need the money, I mean, you know, you could put yourself in a position where, um, you know, you, you just owe, you have more debt, you know, and that, that's not good. So, so be careful. Um, if you lease, um, I, I haven't really heard people say really good things about leasing at Trans Am. Um, I would imagine it's the same at pretty much any trucking company that tries to lease stuff, lease trucks to their drivers. I think the leasing is basically a a tactic that they use to transfer financial liability from themselves onto their drivers. Um, if you want to make money, just just be a straight up owner operator, buy your own truck. Um, I was talking to one guy who said he bought a truck for thirteen thousand dollars and. And he gets, old, and people make fun of him because you know he has to be in for repairs more often than other drivers. But hey, that guy's getting paid a lot of money, and he only owes thirteen thousand dollars on a truck. I mean, you know, these lease drivers are paying I don't know how much for on their lease payments. I mean, that's ridiculous. I I wouldn't want to do that if I ever wanted to go in or operator. I'd just buy my own truck. And I don't think Trans Am will let you drive an old truck like that. You have to have something nicer to work for Trans Am, but as an owner operator, but whatever. Um, yeah, so if you lease, then you have to you have to fill up these accounts um, for um, your um, for your payments. You have to like fund this account and for payments, and one for insurance, and one for uh, maintenance. 
Um, so it's just for a while there, if you lease, you're just not going to be making any money because you're going to be putting money into these accounts. Um, and the lease program, I mean, you know, I, I guess it kind of has its, its benefits. Um, at the end of the of, bleh, at the end of the lease, um, Trans Am gives you a big bonus, and you can just straight up buy the truck and be an owner operator. So I mean, there 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 are pluses to it, but there's also negatives like. Um, you could go out and hit a deer your first week and have five, six thousand dollars worth of damages on the truck that you're responsible for. So, at least I think you are, unless the insurance covers that. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it's just easier starting out to be a company driver, which is what I am. So, I would start out that way. Um, or if you've got the cash, just straight up go owner operator. Um, find a company that'll let you work with a cheapy old truck, and then you're putting money in the bank straight away. Uh, well, that's about it. Here are some videos from the road.